Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, for those of you who's been watching and following the process, please subscribe and follow along with the journey. So I wanted to do a quick update video on everything that's been going on. I didn't really think it was important to show the electrical because it's not as exciting as other parts of the build. But basically, we had to update this. My main house was 150 amps and my city required the ADU to be about 150, 100. So we ended up, we had to update it to 400 amps. So 200 will shoot directly to my main house and 200 will shoot directly to the tiny house. And if you could see, this breaker is for my house. And then this breaker is for the tiny house. This upgrade was done months ago, but when I was having a hard time getting my electrician back on site, Basically, we already had wired the inside of the building and all we had to do left was the underground electrical. But he he gave me a quote and he was trying to get more money to finish out a job that he quoted me for. So I ended up having to go a different direction. There was no hard feelings because the, I learned from how I paid my plumber not to pay any subcontractors that way. With my electrician, I paid him with phases. So I paid him when he completed this and I paid him when he completed the inside. So I was able to hold some of the money for the, for the underground ditch. So there was really no hard feelings. He did great work, but he was slowing down the project for about maybe a month or two. So I ended up going a different direction. So I, I hired a new team. They came in and they, they added the, they ran the underground electrical and I was able to then pass inspection. So let me, let me show you guys the underground electrical. It's not too complicated, honestly. It's just basically running a, a pipe to your tiny house, to your main house. So if you see it here, this is where the underground electrical is going. So inspectors want to see this to be about 18 inches, and they want it to be in the ground. So if anything happens, it's protected. And, and they want it to be basically... If you come over here, they want your wires in this. So it's protected over weather, rain. So we're able to finally get that done. It took some time, but like I said, I wasn't too mad at my electrician because the way I paid him, the way I did the payments, it worked in my favor. Yes, I lost some money because I had to hire a new team and they inflated the price. But at the same time, I was able to keep the project going. And I want to give you guys a little hack. If you're basically building on your property you own and you reside in the property, you could pull your own permits. Like I stated, he had, heard, he had already wired the inside of the building, but he never called inspection because he, he, he basically never called inspection, was dragging his feet. But since I reside in this property, I pulled my own permits. I was able to pull my own permits and me pulling my own electrical permit allowed me to then call inspection and allowed me to then do the underground electrical. So my little hack to you guys is if your project is slowing down, you could pull your own permit. You could move your project. Don't let these subcontractors slow your project down because they don't have the same drive you have. They don't they, like they're going to get paid anyway. So it's not beneficial for them to finish because they, they want to drag their feet. They want to do other projects. They want to go do other projects and make make money and then come back and try to finish your project. So make sure you know that, that you could pull your own permits. So when I pulled my own permits, my project was able to move on and move faster. So I just want to give you guys a little hack there. But let me show you guys how it turned out. So like I said, this is the underground. This is where the pipe goes from the building to the outside breaker box. So I'm about to show you guys that right now. For my city, you're required to have an outside breaker. So you guys could see the goal of this is basically if something happens, you're able to cut off your power, you're able to cut it back on, and it'll give the tiny house power. And it could take power away from the tiny house. And then there's breakers over there. So that breaker I showed you earlier, because if you shut it off, then this won't get any power at all. So we did that. We then passed inspection. There's only one thing the inspector wanted us to add, and I'm going to do it myself, because when you have subcontractors needing to come back for a recall, they try to charge you ridiculous prices. So the only thing that we have to add 
is I need to put this metal rod in the ground and connect it to the ground and for this outside breaker box. That's the only remaining thing that needs to be done. Basically, inspectors will tell you on the final, they want to see this. So I need to make sure before I call final electrical that this is completed and done. Based on the last video you guys watched, these windows wasn't on the last video. I added these two windows because I wanted to give the building more character. I was able to purchase these windows for a great price on Facebook Marketplace, and I just had to get my framer back on site to install them. So I just wanted to show you guys the update, and I know it looks 10 times better than the, it did before. I just felt like it was missing something, and I really like how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did I need the windows or I didn't? Let me know. Let me show you guys the updates we made in the building, the inside. Sorry for the mess, but I wish I could have showed you guys, but all the electrical was ran. We ran the electrical, we passed the inspection. So when I had called my framing inspection, the inspector wanted me to put something called baffles in the ceiling. So he passed us on the framing inspection, but he partially passed us. So I had to put baffles in the ceiling. And then after you put the baffles, then you insulate. So if you guys see the installation for the most part has been completed and it's coming together fairly nicely. So what we did for installation was you could either go R13, R15 for the, for the wall. I decided to go R19. I went R19 because it just better insulates your building. The upper, the higher the R value is, the better insulated your building is. And then for the ceiling, I decided to go R30. I decided to go R30 for the ceiling just so, just because it's just essentially just going to make it more insulated in this building. So I ended up deciding to go to R30. And yeah, so this is how everything is looking. Let me show you guys the bedroom. So we insulated the bedroom. And lastly, I plan on insulating the bathroom. For inspection, it's not required. It just depends on your preference. It's not required for you to insulate the bathroom walls. It's really up to preference. Your inspector is not looking for the bathroom walls to be insulated. On the insulation inspection, he's not looking for this to be done, but it's really up to your preference. I chose to insulate it so my building is fully insulated, but it's really up to you. But let me show you the bathroom and how I'm going to insulate it. So I'm not going to be super technical when I insulate this bathroom because it's not required for inspection. So I'm going to I'm going to try my best to insulate the whole thing, but as whatever this contains, I'm going to use this and I'm going to insulate the bathroom walls. But yeah, guys, I hope you like the update. Do you guys think I should insulate the bathroom or do you think I'm just spending unnecessary money? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, you guys can see a lot's been done. Oh, I also wanted to show you guys. So I had to pull my own homeowner's permit from um, for HVAC. So my electrician already had put that there, but he never did the, the vent and to go to the outside. So I did it myself. I didn't want to waste time. I didn't want to spend unnecessary money. So I was able to go in there. Me and my me and my friend went in there and we got it done. And now we passed inspection for that and we're ready to move on. And you guys might be wondering, what are these loops up here? So these are going to be the kitchen lights. So each loop is going to be, so one light is going to go here. Another light is going to go here. Another light is going to go there. And another light is going to go there. So what I'm doing is I'm skipping each bay. So one light in this bay, you skip this bay, you put another light here, you skip that bay, you put another light there, and you skip that bay, and you put another light. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. It's going to be four kitchen lights. And then if you look up here, 
I'm going to do the same thing. So it's going to be one light here, another light here, another light here, another light there, and another light there. So overall, it's going to look good. I haven't called the installation inspection yet, but based on the work we did, I feel like this is going to pass inspection with flying colors. So I'm very excited for this project to keep moving along. But like I said, sometimes you guys just got to get your hands dirty. I had an installation crew that kept saying they were going to come. They charged me a price. They said they're going to come and do the job. And I'm at the phase in this project where I, time is money. I need to hurry up with this project so I could keep continuing. So I went to Home Depot and I bought these. Me and my fiance and my best friend, we did the installation ourselves. We, we did the walls. We did the every wall. We made sure we watched YouTube videos and that helped us get our project moving. So sometimes if you really want to be in construction, you have to be willing to actually do some of the work. It might not be as hard. It's just more time consuming. So that's all I want to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys a little more stuff, but yeah. So we just finished insulating the bathroom. Like I said, it's very easy to insulate the bathroom walls because you literally just put the things in, you put it between each beam, you put it in, in, in one bay and it, it slides in like a glove. So if you guys see insulated, we kind of ran out of insulation. So it's kind of our choice if we want to pay extra money to, to finish this out. Each bag costs about $85, it's pretty expensive. Um, and it doesn't cover that much square foot. I think it covers like about 57, but yeah, you guys can see it's done. We might buy more, we might not. But um, the last thing I just wanted to show you guys is, you guys see the job site, it looks like a mess. I would not recommend you call an inspection with your job site looking like this. So the next thing I'm about to do is I'm gonna clean up the whole job site and make it sparkly clean. So when the inspector comes, he's able to walk through the job site, look at everything and pass inspection and keep moving this project forward. So watch this time lapse and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. So earlier I had failed my first framing inspection because the inspector wanted the windows to be 44 inches from the ground and I had it higher up. So I had to get my, my um, framing, framing crew back on site to correct this. So I, I dropped the height of this window, ended up dropping the height of this window here, and I also dropped the height of that window. But there, and also he wanted me to replace both of these windows because he said that the clearance had to be 24 inches. And if you guys see, the clearance is about 21 inches. So I kind of was very upset because I couldn't find the window that was 24 inches. But when the inspector came back, he said, it's OK, drop the windows for me and I'll pass you inspection. So I did that and I ended up passing the inspection. So I wanted to just show you guys that. So just know that like that, that's really major. A lot of people don't know that when they start building. I didn't know it had to be 44 inches from the ground to the window. When I got my plans made, that's how it was on my plans, but my framer didn't follow that. So I had to get him out here to correct it. And another update that I wanted to tell you guys is if you guys see up here, this didn't used to be here. When I changed plumbers, my new plumber basically stated, I don't know how true this is, but he didn't have enough beam to put the pipes through. So he basically just ran the the pipe where it's supposed to be but for for you to do drywall you need to have these boxed up so i got my framers back here and they were able to box this up thank you for tuning in guys if you guys like what i'm doing here if you guys like how i'm being fully transparent showing you the full process please subscribe to my youtube channel please click that subscribe button follow me throughout this build out like i showed you guys earlier 
All the installation is done. It's looking real good. Lastly, is past the installation inspection and then we're able to drywall. So keep tuning along, keep watching, please subscribe. I, I really appreciate it and help my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I appreciate you guys. You see, we cleaned up the job site. Looks way better. I'm gonna finish up, but thank you for watching.